The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Welcome back. We are here, EMC World 2014 in lovely Las Vegas, the Sahara Convention Center at the back of the Palacio. Uh, we're here uh, with our next guest. We're excited, we're going to jump right into it. I got two guests. I lost my co-host, Hendrik Wagner, America's Theater Lead, SAP, EMC, and Phil Leuven from Fritz and Mazel. Did I get that right? Yeah. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So let's jump in. So. Uh, we're going to get going. We have a little uh, special announcement, a uh, new program. So we've had people introduce books on theCUBE. We've had introdu people introduce companies on theCUBE. We've had people introduce all kinds of things on theCUBE. But today we've got a new program. So what do we, uh, what do we got here? We want to talk a little bit about EMC Elect program and the SAP Mentor program. So uh, if you're an EMC Elect to get this cool business card, and I actually want a few more of them, but uh, this is what I got. But EMC Elect was established uh, last year in 2013, and I was very fortunate to be an EMC Elect in 2014. There's about 100 EMC Elect members, and there are about three attributes or three common themes from the Elect is around social engage engagement, okay. leadership, um, and social media. Okay. And we're out evangelizing the EMC brand. Some of us are EMC employees, some of them are partners and customers, and we like to have a lot of fun around social media around that. And so, again, how many, how many people have this? I want to say it's about a hundred, but then I saw some of our executives were tweeting and that saying that they had one as well. So I need a couple more to give him out these business cards. And this is way cool. It's all laser cut with holes in it. So that's good. So it's basically all about being the evangelist. So you're out there, you know, carrying the flag, getting it out there. Creating, uh, you know, everybody says there's signals and noise, and obviously we want to put out more signals around it, uh, what we're doing and uh, how we're helping innovate for our customers and solve problems. So what's interesting is, is it really shows the value that you guys are putting on social and tying that back to thought leadership and leadership. Talk yeah. a little bit about how that's worked out because I'm, I'm sure there's still a few naysayers out there that just don't get it. You know, what is Twitter, what, what is this social thing that's going on and why is it important in my business? Well, I think a perfect example is what we're trying to do here with the EMC Elect and the SAP Mentor community and the collaboration between the two. So maybe Phil, take us some time to explain the SAP Mentor program and how we're collaborating <coughs> between EMC Elect and the SAP Mentors. Well, basically the, the SAP Mentor program got established in order to have uh, the community leaders, the people who are influencers in the SAP ecosystem, in the SAP community, to uh, kind of act as a, as a channel of communication between SAP themselves, between uh, freelancers, partners, uh, customers, and uh, relay messages and be able to communicate whatever new advances there are, whatever uh, opportunities that are out there. And by being able to leverage that, between EMC and SAP, I think we're open up, opening up a new channel that we can actually do a, a bilateral communication platform with a hardware vendor and the SAP uh, as a software vendor, as a cloud company, and the customer and uh, partner ecosystem. So, you know, Bill McDermott joined the keynote live, uh, so clearly, you know, the guys at the top have a good relationship, the companies have a good relationship, but that doesn't always necessarily trickle down down into the trenches for the people that are responsible for exactly. getting stuff done. And we see a lot in the open source community, a lot of meetups and you know, a real passion amongst the, the practitioners. So talk a little bit about how this program percolates down to the people in the trenches that are actually getting the work done and how they can take advantage of this. Well, I mean, the, the, to become an SAP mentor, you actually have to be a, a community member that is very active, that uh, is being seen, that is very visible in the community, and that can also be uh, be looked upon as uh, being someone that I can easily approach with questions, with comments, with uh, any kind of feedback that I would like to give or that I would also like to receive in regards to certain products. And by able to, by being able to channel down towards the individual, but then having a communication layer like the mentors that are also able to, to have direct communication with uh, product management, with executive board level, and being able to give feedback back to those levels, I think that's a pretty good uh, combination in order to facilitate all areas. And how many mentors are there? Uh, right now the there's roughly around 150 mentors worldwide. Okay. 
And then what is the community? I'm sorry, I keep interrupting you. <laughs> no worries. So a couple of years ago, we met actually in social media and started collaborating, getting to know each other. And we found by getting to know EMC Elect members and SAP mentors, that's a huge benefit for the ecosystem. In the end of the day, it's a benefit for the customer. We're learning what's going on, what's, what's changing in SAP, what's changing in EMC, in the ecosystem. We're helping solve problems, we're helping to remove uh, barriers from our customers, ultimately helping them innovate faster. And opening up lines of communications and what I like to call real-time communication, which right. is you know play on SAP HANA and real-time right. capabilities. Right, and what are the various channels of communication within this kind of mentoring and, and uh Connecting, if you will. I mean, if, if you take, for instance, the announcement that we had today about uh, uh, VMware and HANA being able to go productive on VMware, uh, I mean, that's a huge step for for anything that has to do with end memory. So by being able to, to facilitate then also the voice of the EMC community together with the voice of the SAP community and being able to, to uh, interact with each other on a very open and broad level, I think that's going to help advance the product and bring the product uh, a lot more visible also out to the individual and uh, if he or she has questions, she directly has a channel that she can go back to and, and get direct feedback and get, get direct communication. Yeah, and then I was going to say, and how receptive are the product managers at SAP and EMC to the feedback that's coming through this channel? I mean, uh, SAP has uh, various conferences throughout the year, be it uh, SAP Decode as it's called now, not TechEd right, anymore, right. Um, be it Sapphire, where the mentors actually get together, are very visible at those events, and then also have a set of uh, meetings with executive board uh, members or with uh, different product managers or uh, different people out of strategy. So therefore, there's a direct challenge communication. So they're listening. Yeah. Yeah. For, for us, the virtual HANA announcement this morning was just massive. I mean, it's just so exciting for customers to start leveraging the virtual infrastructure they build for their SAP environment to also run HANA on and not having to buy separate or operate separate infrastructure for that. Every client and partner we're talking about is that saying that that's the direction they want to go. And now when we're leveraging our social communication vehicles, whether it's Twitter or LinkedIn and our blogs, our ability to communicate the benefits of that out to a larger audience is just massive. Yeah, but you said they've been asking for it though, right? You know, non-prod for virtual HANA has been there for two, two and a half years, and you know, there's been a long road, but finally this morning it was announced. Uh, we're very active in the virtual HANA uh, messaging and evangelizing, partly because EMC IT has been live on uh, virtual HANA in productive mode since uh, they run uh, BPC on HANA since November, and it's just a great thing for the customers on, on adopting HANA in the right pace and the right type of infrastructure. You know being the same type of infrastructure in the same SLAs, the same TCO that they're building for their ERP structures. Right, right. And when is that GA? Well, so it was GA this morning. Oh, they around, GA this yeah, morning? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so awesome. there's uh, initial production support. Okay. You know, there's many kind of clients like EMC IT that's already running production. I was production say, there's got to be, there's there's be some other, instances out there running, They right? are, but now the floodgates are open. It's very exciting. It's one of the biggest topics we're going to be uh, talking about. And something that's exciting between the SAP mentors and EMC Elect that we can help communicate in the behalf of our partners and customers. Oh, that's great. That's great. So they're, they're ready. And I mean, not only looking at, uh, at VMware part, but also uh, looking at the announcement that came yesterday in regards to DSSD. Uh, having bought the company and, and having a lookout and uh, trying to place a new era of how storage computing is going to be going forward and developing something new that has not been there yet. Developing this entity SAP in memory or in general in memory computing into a whole new uh, level, that, that's very exciting. Yeah, I mean, the, the announcement yesterday and the fact that Bill McDermott was there on video and talking about it right. and exciting about the partnership is just fantastic. We got an opportunity to meet with John Rhodes as a, as a result of his EMC Elect and SAP Mentor just a second ago, and he talked about the fact that they're placing bets about building architecture around in-memory computing that they believe in the future is going to be more pre prevalent. I truly believe if you push the limit of that innovation, we'll help the in ecosystem to innovate faster and get that faster and we'll you know, be one of the leaders in that ecosystem of getting there. So it's just really fantastically exciting for us. Yeah, you get on the virtuous cycle, right? The more yeah. people use yeah. it, the more you build, the more you right. build, the cheaper it goes, the more and proliferation. The more you put yourself out there in order to develop something new that hasn't been there yet, the more you open the door for innovation that other people can produce because 
they cannot produce something that doesn't have a platform. So by leveraging to build a platform that hasn't been there yet and advancing yourself and putting yourself on the line to, to make that happen, you actually give others the opportunity to grow. And are they ready? How receptive are they? They are. They're ready to go? Of course. <laughs> That's the whole part of it. That's the fun part about it. And where do you think some of the early, uh, early application stacks, early victories are going to be? Verticals, who's going to be the early adopters to take advantage of this thing? And, and have mean, the fortitude to run with it. I mean, if, if we if we look at um, uh, DSSD, isn't that the point where we can say, okay, we have a product that we can uh, already look at and feel and, and, right. and touch and everything. But if we uh, take, for instance, innovation that EMC is doing uh, with uh, uh, Project Jupiter, or how do you call it? EMC big da EMC's big data platform. Um, that's something where innovation truly is going to uh, be a showcase. I mean, if you, if want you dive in a little bit more yeah, to, the, uh, it's, it's, to, to, to Jupiter. It's something we're pretty excited about. Uh, SAP has this strategy around their HANA data platform or their big data strategy. It very simply says, I put hot data in HANA, I put warm data in IQ, and cold data in Hadoop. And we looked at it and said, you know, it's interesting if we, in the past, just provide infrastructure for pieces of that, but why don't we build an EMC big data platform for all of that, that can start very small and can scale very large and leverage concepts of data temperature, you know, an enterprise SAP data lake, right? right. And then some, provide some intelligence around that of ingesting data, moving data, looking at data in, in, uh, in a federated query environment. And what the reception we're getting from the customer is, you know what, we wanted to go tackle a big project like that around SAP, but we couldn't do it because it was too complex and building all the parts and how do I manage it, how do I back it up, how do I replicate it, what's the security? You've thought about this, so Project Jupiter is that platform. We thought about all the things you need to th think about if you have a big, big data analytics environment that scales to petabytes, and it's uh, we're getting a great reception from SAP customers, from the ecosystem, from the integrators, and it's pretty exciting. So talk a little bit about that temperature grade, because the Hadoop guys would probably say, we, we think all data is hot data, that's why we want to stick it in Hadoop, and you, know, you may not know if you need it today or need it tomorrow, but we'll figure that out later. You know, it'd be interesting to hear SAP's perspective on, uh, on that. Well, I can't talk for SAP, but yeah. I can talk uh, on my own. I mean, um, at the moment, uh, the way that we're leveraging all this big data topic, and I mean, uh, there's such a plethora of, of uh, information out there that you're trying to somehow digest and get your feel for, and trying to actually uh, filter that in order to be able to make something useful out of it and trying to access that through methods like Hadoop and uh, other variances, that's actually the big, the big thing that we need to tackle. And if, uh, if we can find a sort of way to structure that methodology of being able to pull data from all the different spots where uh, we think we might get structured data from, then we have a method of really going forward and, and uh, not just taking all the data, dumping it somewhere, and right. then trying to build a showcase for it afterwards. Right. For, for us, what we're seeing when we have the conversation with the clients, it's kind of the art of the possible. You know, SAP data, there's data about customers data, there's the data about products, and there's transactional data. Then there's all these unstructured data, right? That could be meter data, social data, um, uh, all kinds of various unstructured forms and so forth. And the big powerful use cases in certain verticals come when you combine those two data sources right. and do some kind of query on some time of search, right. right? So that's kind of what the Jupyter platform and enables somebody to do much simpler, uh, right TCO, and it's aligned with SAP strategy, which is pretty exciting. And then there's, there's the big sources of structured data that are public sources of data, right? Like the, like the, the FAA exactly. flight data, right? Which people use in all kinds of interesting applications. I mean, we had uh, we had an interesting session, I think it was like 2010, 2011, uh, um, called the uh, Innovation Weekend with SAP. It was an event prior to uh, SAP TechEd, and we actually had British Airways come in with like all their flight data uh, that they had from when they were servicing airplanes. And they said, we would like to find a way in order to structure that data so we can do predictive analytics on what part is going to go bad in what plane next. Right. And, and getting companies to come out with those kind of business cases and actually trying to think, okay, what can we do now with this and how can we leverage this? That's actually... So that's an interesting one that was led really by the customer. Yes. From SAP's point of view, not that you can speak for them, you know, opinions by own like Twitter. Yeah. Uh, but 
but that wasn't where where SAP traditionally played, right? It was an ERP. It was closed. They controlled things. What, is that well, no, changing it's, it's, in terms it's a part, of pulling some of that outside SAP, stuff? It's, it's a part where SAP plays. It's just the customer had a brilliant idea, and of course there was communication with SAP. Otherwise, they wouldn't have known about right, the event. Right, right. But they said, hey, this might be a, a sort of channel where you can bring in something to get an idea out of it and see uh, if there's even a possibility to run with that kind of an idea or if it's completely abstruse to even keep further thinking in, into that direction. Right. I think but, it, but am I in, in, incorrect in thinking that it's really kind of a, a, a not core SAP data set that they want to pull in to try to find some of that insight and is that something that, that we well, see mean, more and more of that from SAP down the road, or well, it's, uh, maybe I'm completely uh, no. I mean, off base. Depend, depending on how you look at the IT strategy, when a company decides on IT strategy, there's so many uh, layers that you're looking at now. You're not looking at total cost of ownership anymore. You're looking at total cost of installation. You're looking at your components from a hardware, software, services, and technology perspective. So you're trying to get a 360 degree perspective and insight into that area, and then suddenly you have uh, from a business perspective, especially if you go into HANA, you don't sell HANA because it's an IT solution. You sell HANA because there's a business case for it, there's a business challenge for it, and there's a need for it that's been proven and evaluated. So suddenly you have business perspectives from an operational, uh, legislative, uh, financial, and uh, um, operational perspective. So people are actually starting to think about, okay, how do, do I bring CAPEX, OPEX into this discussion mm -hmm. with it? How do I leverage on, on, those, uh, on those areas? So the IT component has gotten a lot more complex and to the point is it's not just anymore business comes in, says I need something and IT goes out and builds something. Right. But it's gone far, far beyond that. So that's why you need, why it's essential to have a clear and sound IT strategy that is looking forward. Awesome, so we're getting towards the end of our show here, but I want to go ahead and can you tell people how they can find more information about the SAP Mentor Program and the EMC Elect Program? Where should they go? Sure, yeah, EMC Elect, I mean, you can Google us and there's a lot of information on the EMC Community Network. You can follow me on Twitter. Uh, I think my Twitter name is up there. I have a personal blog. Uh, I'm very passionate about the collaboration, the social aspect, user groups, getting customers together. You've probably heard of the SAP Week events that we do and getting right. clients together and collaborating. We're going to continue this collaboration with SAP Mentor. Uh, Sapphire is right around the corner and we think it's going to be a great thing for SAP and for EMC, the partner ecosystem, and, and the end of the day, a great thing for the customers. Yeah, so for, for the SAP Mentors, you find them uh, at sapmentors.sap.com. Um, at every conference from SAP, we usually run around in these jerseys so you can see us all. Uh, just come up to us, talk to us, uh, tell us what you think, what your concerns are, and uh, yeah, Twitter handle should be up there, so just try it. Excellent. Well, Henry, Phil, thanks for stopping by. Uh, as always, uh, the Cube Twitter handle, we always follows Cube guests. So anytime there's a Cube guest that you want to quickly find their Twitter handle, Google works pretty well, but you can also go on who the Cube Twitter handle is following. So we are again at uh, EMC World 2014. We'll be back with our next segment after this short break. You're watching the Cube.